Today, we're trying something a bit strange and a bit different. Well, I've been saying in recent vlogs that I bought a load of new Sony equipment. So I thought I'd compare the newly bought A7R 3 with the Nikon D8 500 together with what used to be the Olympus flagship, which is the EM1 Mark II. I'm kind of filming a bit blind at the moment. So on the Olympus, we can see with the flip screen exactly what the framing is. With these two, I don't actually know if I'm actually recording. As I've been saying, besides the Olympus, on the Sony and the Nikon, there are no articulating screens. So I have no idea whether or not those are clear. But from experience, the Nikon in the dark it's not completely pitch black, but the Nikon does brilliantly. The Sony apparently isn't bad either. I think for this kind of lighting, half the living room, the lights have been switched off. But even on the Olympus, it's doing okay. So let's switch all the lights off. That should be interesting. We're always banging on about how important the articulating screen is. I think for an experiment like this, totally important because at the moment all I can see is myself in the dark on the Olympus screen on the Sony I have no idea see when I do this even though I can't see anything on the Nikon screen I can hear the lens trying to focus focus darling do it do it move it move it no on the Sony there's no noise for the lens so I'll have to wait for the editing to see how much of a failure this experiment is. But I'm assuming, because the Nikon, <laughs> I can only look at the Olympus when I'm speaking because that's the only screen that's on. Uh, the Nikon and the Sony are full frame and their sensors are larger, which mean in the dark, they perform better. Continuing with our camera test with different lenses and different cameras. So the test with the light switches, that was done with 50 millimeter. It was a Sigma 1.4 on the Sony and a Nikon 50 millimeter 1.4 on the Nikon. The Olympus 25 millimeter 1.2, that works out to be 50 millimeter in full frame. For those of you who vlog a lot, you'll know the importance of the flip screen, but also how very important it is to have decent stabilization on the camera or on the lens. And as you can see, with the Olympus and with Panasonic's, the stabilization is super. Just seeing if there's anything that shouldn't be in the shot. The Olympus is great for vlogging, but the bokeh, can you see? It's not that amazing. Besides being a bit heavy, like the Sony, with that massive lens on it, the Nikon's not fit for selfie filming. There's no flip screen, and also it has a very hard time focusing continually backwards and forwards. If I move the camera backwards and forwards, or if I move left and right, the lens is gonna have a, a mother of a time trying to find your face. But at least you can see the lens jumping backwards and forwards, working hard to find your face. Last year when Damon was born, I used the D850 uh, with the 24mm lens to film his being born, all the little stories in the hospital, him coming home, the initial couple of months at home, feeding, sleeping, you name it. All of Damon's stuff was done on the D850. Of course, I did it manually. I spent a lot of time changing focus from the back to the front, in and out, it was done really meticulously. I really enjoyed it because I was filming Damon. But were I to hand this camera to someone else to film us, for us, I'm not sure it'd be that easy to use. The effort, figuring out the focus, anticipating people moving backwards and forwards, left and right, it's just not easy. So for us amateurs, I think it's easier if you use a Sony or an Olympus, even though the Olympus, it's the sensor is smaller, the depth of field is more shallow. I'm not entirely sure it's worth making a massive effort to film 
two or three minutes of stuff and those two or three minutes might be just Damon eating a banana and that will happen every single day but to make that effort every single day seems just the thought of it it's tiring I guess each camera still has their own forte of course if I were running around vlogging on the move Olympus is still better than either Sony or Nikon because the stabilization is superb in the dark taking pictures with low light I think Nikon is better I'm more confident using the Nikon than either camera the Olympus the sensor is very small so in the dark with insufficient light it's just very noisy the Sony I'm just not particularly familiar with you the one I'm using now also, my collection of lenses on the Sony is a bit scant right now, so some things that need to be filmed in very small detail, like the May favourites last week. I used a lot of macro lens filming for the, the hour marks on the watch, on various other things. Before I get the macro lens on the Sony, the Olympus is great for that too. Yeah, sorry about this. It's a lot of ranting. There's a lot of not knowing what I'm saying. But I think for those of you who are into cameras, you kind of understand what I'm saying. Enough talking. We'll play with all the Sony gear next time because there's a lot of stuff that I've bought that I haven't shown you yet. A lot of stuff.